119, we're going to look at 9 through 16. But before we get there, I'm going to tell you a story about my growing up, so everybody get comfy. Once upon a time, a land far, far away called the Philippines, which were a group of islands off the coast of Southeast Asia. Southeast Asia. Uh, my dad was assigned by the United States Air Force to Clark Air Base in the Philippines. And one of the things that we did there, one of the problems that we had, along with quite a few other people, was access, constant, easy access to clean drinking water. Now, this is not a made-up story. This is the truth. The air base had water purification facilities, but they also had difficulty with sustaining power, and this was the 80s, folks. Um, if it came between running the water purification plant and running the radar, guess what ran on, what runs on an air base? The radar, okay? That's just the way it works. The starting parts for the F-4s got power if that meant you didn't have power. This is why for quite a few months out of the year, in base housing, power ran on this system, two hours on, two hours off. You would be amazed the things that you can do with Sterno. <laughs> when your two hours that your house doesn't get power are from you know, 1700 to 1900 and you have a family to feed. That's the way things just happen. Uh, but access to clean drinking water was a problem. Now, you could use the water, you could cook with it because you're going to boil it. We ate a lot of stuff that started with noodles because you had to boil the water anyway, so you might as well. Uh, anyway, you cooked rice, but that's the way you would cook rice, is you would boil the water first and you put the rice in it. All of you are saying, that's not how you cook rice. Yes, it is. If the water's got to boil for five minutes before you can use it, yes, it is the way you cook rice. So you did all these types of things, but you still needed clean drinking water to be able to drink and to be able to brush your teeth. You could shower in dirty water. I was, boy, I didn't care if I showered in clean water. It didn't matter to me if I smelled. Because um, I was a boy, it was the tropics, it never got cold, and you were always sweating. It's just the way you did things. So the solution that the Army used, the Air Force used, and the Army, Army with them, is that they would haul in behind the big news and half trucks these giant trailers filled with water, which we refer to as water buffalo. And you could go, and they would bring in a water buffalo every two weeks, and we had these big 10-gallon clear plastic water jugs that we would put in the back of the station wagon and haul over to the central point on base where they had the water buffalo, and you'd fill up your water and take it home. And that's what you had for drinking water and toothbrushing water for the next two weeks. Now sometimes though, you know, you could get a buffalo through. But sometimes, most of the time that you could, and that's where your water came from. That's where you got pure, usable drinking water and toothbrushing water. Because you had to brush your teeth. Right, that's required. You had to do that because you were going to the dentist and he didn't like it if you didn't have, if you, if you hadn't brushed your teeth. Now, I want you to take the water buffalo story and I want you to park down on one side of your brain. We're going to look at Psalm 119, starting in verse 9. And where it says bait there, most of you thought it said best, it doesn't. That's the name of the Hebrew letter that every verse in, this, in these eight verses starts with. Psalm 119 is an extended acrostic poem. Each section of eight verses starts with the same letter of the Hebrew alphabet. If you'd like to know the Hebrew alphabet, it's in the headings. You have a modern Bible translation. Aleph, Beth, Nilum, Aleph, and so forth. This is the Beth section, all right? Or the Beth section, if you would like to call it that, but you wouldn't have it right in Hebrew. Uh, how can a young man keep his way pure? By keeping it according to your word. With all my heart I have sought you. Do not let me wander from your commandments. Your word I have treasured in my heart that I may not sin against you. Blessed are you, O Lord. Teach me your statutes. With my lips I have told of all the ordinances of your mouth. I have rejoiced in the way of your testimonies as much as in all riches. I will meditate on your precepts and regard your ways. I shall delight in your statutes. I shall not forget your word. The first thing to ask about this is the first verse talks about how can a young man keep his way pure. How can any of us keep our purity? Well, what is purity and is it worth it? If you go back to drinking water, and 
and you think about all the little stuff and all the little floaties that are in there, if you just pump it out of the ground without anything to purify it, yes, it is. If you start thinking about the illnesses and the aches that can come from it, the heavy metals and the weird stuff that can be in your water and the amoebas and the bacterium and all that type of thing that you don't want. In the same way in our life, purity is worth it. <clears throat> purity is not just the avoidance of major problems. We didn't have a problem with you know, big chunks of wood floating in the water. The problem was the little things that you can't see. Oftentimes for us as believers, while there are people who have problems with big, evident issues, a person who thinks they'll make a living as a Christian and also working as a hitman, for example, is the person who's got a problem, you know, has a big problem. It doesn't take a whole lot of study of Scripture to know that you can't do that for a living. It's the little things, the purity. But is it knowable? It is, and it is standard. Purity is clear. How do we know what purity is? We go to the Word. We come to the Word of God. And look, this is how, this is why the psalmist tells us. How can we keep our way pure? By keeping it according to God's Word. So we consider the Word. He says, I have treasured your Word. Your Word I have treasured in my heart that I may not sin against you. Or if you want to go King James, it's thy word that I have hidden in my heart that I may not sin against God. Or against you. I've got that mixed up with another verse. <laughs> I marked a couple of those verses. You know, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a lamp to my path. And I will hide your word in my heart that I may not sin against God. And I think I get all those kind of jumbled up. And most of them come from Psalm 119. But the word is where we get our standard of purity. And that's how we know what the word is. You look through this and you see... For example, do not let me wander from your commandments. That's a word that's used to refer to what God has, has, has told us to do. Verse 13, all the ordinances of your mouth. Verse 12, teach me your statutes. Verse 14, I have rejoiced in the way of your testimonies. Verse 15, I meditate on your precepts. Verse 16, I delight in your statutes. I shall not forget your word. All these words come together. They occur over and over again in the Old Testament in various places to refer to the different parts of God's word. His statutes, his precepts, his testimonies, the things that God has done, the instructions that he gives. And when you see meditate in Scripture, don't think of, we, we've taken the word meditate in the last 50 years in this country, ever since the Beatles started talking about their Maharishi and whatnot, and we've made meditation into this open-minded, goofy thing where we sit there and clear your mind and let the, let the universe flow through it. The Bible talks about meditation, so some people say, well, the Bible says meditate, so just go out there and empty your brain and let whatever comes, comes. No. Scriptural meditation is different. And you'll find quite a few people across church history talk about meditation. I just read a great book about the Puritan idea of meditation, but what it has to do with is not emptying yourself, but filling yourself with God's Word, blocking out the other distractions, and spending your time thinking about, when God said this, I wonder what He meant. Let's look to God's Word to see what God's talking about so that we can understand it. And it's, a great, it's a great idea. You ought to meditate, but I don't mean that you ought to sit there with your legs crossed like you and go home. You ought to sit there with the Bible open and say, Lord, what have you got to say? And read it. The only people that should spend their days meditating on homes are the same people meditating on watts and amps and getting the lights back on. Because ohms are part of you know, electricity, if you didn't know that. Purity and our ideas of that should come from the Word. It should come from the Word of God only. There are a lot of other things that want to clamor for our attention. But we ought to be focused on the Word of God. And this is often the core of our problem. We try to get our ideas of purity from everything else. Whether it is the wisdom of the previous generation, some of us want to just, that's where we, but well, we just want to learn like people did 50 years ago. Let's just live like them. Let's live like people that lived 150 years ago. But let's just tie into this wisdom or that wisdom. We can get books from Dr. Phil and from this person and that person. We can watch Oprah. Or we can dig up, you know, I, I'm enjoying reading a book called the Medi 
meditations of Marcus Aurelius it's by a Roman emperor. And it's about his way of life. And you know, oh, there's a lot of wisdom there. But purity doesn't come from that. Purity comes from the word, the word only. But the challenge for us as believers is not only that we block out those other sources, not that we ignore them completely, but that we say our purity comes only from the word of God. But it's also that we learn to get it ourselves. And now we come back to the water buffalo. See, here's the problem with the water buffalo. From time to time, you couldn't even get a water buffalo in. During typhoon season, the water buffalo came up from Subic Bay because the United States Navy has more water purification ability aboard some of their ships than the city of Almira has. And they would fill up in those other places when the power grid around the air base was, was faltering. And they would haul those water buffalo in. But during typhoon season, you couldn't get trucks across the roads. Especially pulling something heavy, like 500 gallons of water. Sometimes you were late. If you missed your opportunity, if you missed your time frame, missed your window, and you were supposed to, your family's a lot of time was fill up at the water buffalo between... You know, between 1630 and 1700, which is between 4.30 and 5 o'clock in the afternoon, for people with normal clocks. If you missed that, then you went to the back of the line. And if there wasn't water the next day, then there just wasn't. And so you had to boil yours. You had to find some other way to try to purify what you got out of the tap. And there were all sorts of things that could cause you to miss your buffalo. The real solution was that you needed better wells, simpler and easier purification options to use right there where you were. Well, in the same way, we have to be careful. You couldn't live life based off of hoping a water buffalo would get in to provide all your water. We can't live our life as Christians hoping to get enough purification for the word from occasional drive-by opportunities where we import somebody every couple of weeks, where every now and then we connect with a person. The goal that we ought to have as God's people is to learn to dig in to the word. Because it's not enough that we love the preaching of the word. I appreciate that y'all show up and listen to me preach. It's not enough that we love to hear other people teach it, to sing, to talk about it. It's not enough if we rely on you know, our preacher, our Sunday school teacher, our favorite person that we can listen to on the, on the radio or on the internet or our favorite conference to go to, I enjoy my opportunities to go and listen to people present the word at, at pastors' conferences and conventions and other things. There was a great Southern Baptist Convention Ethics and Religious Liberty Group did a, a conference this past week that I enjoyed reading some of the live stream from, and I'll go back and watch some of the sermons. It's good. But that is not enough. We have to learn to dig in and draw our own out. If you don't think that you can learn to walk with God unless you run off to the, to the next camp or the next conference, then you're going to miss because you're not relying on the Word yourself. You're relying on other people. You're relying on a water buffalo. You're not learning to purify things and draw from the Word of God like you need to. Is it good that we're here to help each other? It is. Do we sometimes need clear, plain direction from somebody that knows what they're talking about? We do. But our long-term goal as Christians is to learn to reach into the Word for ourselves and purify our hearts based on what God has said, not what anybody said about it. And then what we do is we make disciples, is we teach others to go to the Word and do the same thing. Water buffalo are great in times of crisis. They're not a way to live. You wouldn't want to live here in Elmira or in 
entire supply of water came from whatever we could haul in in a couple of weeks. We could make it for a few days on that. But most of us would be out there trying to figure out what was wrong with, our, what was wrong with the well and digging deeper. I want to challenge you. Dig deeper. Ask for help. Ask for guidance. But learn to dig and have your own connection with the Word of God so that you're able to purify your own ones. Instead of relying on hoping that you'll hear from somebody else. So this week, dig in. Read, learn, grow. And find somebody else to help teach how to grow themselves. Because that's one of the best ways to submit the lessons that God is teaching you, is to pass it on to somebody else. Let's pray again. Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for the opportunity.